you've heard of the Rose Bowl Parade, mm -hmm. and guess who I've met? I've met one of the amazing people that gets to work with hundreds of volunteers since she was 16 years old, and she's going to tell us what the adventure has been like with working with uh, volunteers, which we know is God's gift to the world. So let's introduce yourself first. Sure. Turn to our audience and tell them who you uh, are. My name is Jennifer Madsen, and I work with the Lutheran Hour Float in the Tournament of Roses Parade. Yay, and that's awesome. So you started when you were 16 years old. Yes, I was started um, being in charge of a float at the age of 16, mm -hmm. and through a series of things, ended up getting into that role and um, just did well and took it on for years to come. So this is my 22nd year now. Wow. 22 years. She looks 22. <laughs> Thank you. So I know that the Rose Bowl Parade has been a tradition for many, many years, mm -hmm. and it's a huge project, a huge undertaking. I couldn't even imagine a 16-year-old trying to manage that many people. How many people help to volunteer to decorate the float every year? Well, um, part of our fundraisers for the float is we coordinate uh, volunteers, and we have about 5,000 eight-hour shifts that we have every year. Wow. They don't all work on the Lutheran Hour float, but work on other contract floats that we do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have lots of volunteers that come. Tell us where they come from. They come from all over. We have some local ones that come from Southern California, and it's their annual tradition. We have people that have, it's on their bucket list, mm -hmm. and that their their dream in life was to come out and see the, um, to help decorate the floats. Mm -hmm. We have people from the Midwest, from Florida, from just all over the country that come. And so I know that when you talk about decorating a float, mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of effort that goes into it for mm -hmm. one, but there's a lot of design components and uh, stipulations and guidelines that you have to meet. You've got personalities coming from everywhere. Yes. How do you manage to give the right person the right job that's unique to them that causes their personality to flourish rather than for them to feel like they've driven all over the all the way across the world to be under a taskmaster. How yeah. do you do that? You know, volunteers are the backbone of of this float project mm -hmm. and you need to um, just understand people and where they come from. I like to interview people when they come, say, ask where they're from, what are their gifts? I had one year where one of the gentlemen was a roofer, mm -hmm. and we had a church float. So I said, can you make me a, a shingle pattern so we can keep using this? Mm -hmm. And so he goes, well, what kind of shingle pattern? And I looked at him and I said, I'm 22, I don't know shingle patterns, can you just make me one? And he goes, oh yeah, we'll make a great one. So we did that, and then I had some ladies that wanted to just sit and relax for the day, so they ended up cutting out shingles. But you you ask people what their gifts and their skills are, yeah. and you're able to then use them. We have the ladies that are the quilters or the crocheters that love to do the fine little intricate work. Yeah. So as we have uh, like lima beans and kidney beans that are put on one bean at a time, wow. we try to get those people that that's their gift to do mm -hmm. those kind of experiences. Wow. So you really do take into consideration the person's personality, mm -hmm. the uniqueness of their skills, where they come from, and the kinds of things that they've done. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have a roofer handling little lima beans? and No, you try not to. <laughs> you try to get something that they want to do mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, these are volunteers. They've chosen to come and yeah. to donate their time. Yeah. You want them to have a great experience yeah. so that they'll either come back or they'll share their experience and get more people involved. Very good. And so then with these volunteers that come from all over the world and you've got now 22 years of experience, mm -hmm. how many of them actually return? We have a handful that return year after year wow. and have become like your family. Mm -hmm. So you look forward to having them each and every year come out and um, it's that week that you're a family yeah. which is just a unique experience that they you don't see each to. other and before social media was really big you really had no clue what was going on in their life for that whole year yeah. you come back together and you take off just where you left off which oh, is kind of fun that's really calling a place community creating community and creating something that yeah yeah. Wonderful. Tell us about the Lutheran Hour, because I know that is the float that you decorate. Yes. Tell me about it. We do the Lutheran Hour float. It's the only religious float in the Tournament of Roses Parade, wow. and we've been able to keep that for 68 years now. Wow. So it's been... What a tradition. I know, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. That is amazing. And so um, the floats are judged, and you've actually won before. Tell me about your winning. 
You know, um, the floats are judged every year, and our float committee has made um, has come up with that we will never compromise our message to win an award. Mm -hmm. If we win an award, it's the frosting on the cake, and yeah, it's sweet. But if we compromise our message, we lose everything. Yeah. So if you notice, every year our message is clear um, to the people that view the float mm -hmm. if we don't have that. Now, it is sweet when you win, like anything. Yeah. Um, and there are times when uh, it always comes as a surprise to me. I never assume that I'll win. I just know that I'm there for my purpose to share my message. Very good. Um, but there are those times when you find out the morning at 6 a.m. that your float has won. Wow. And I've, uh, the, um, the floral director just reminded me of a time when we won, and I ran across screaming and jumped into her arms and hugged her <laughs> because it was like, oh, my gosh, we won. Yeah. But that's not the important part. Yeah. The important part is pulling so many people together, yeah. so many gifts together. I consider volunteers as gifts because they are. to say that you are a volunteer means I'm willing to give something of myself mm -hmm. without a cost and without expectation. Yeah. And then, I mean, they're just the most beautiful thing to see when they roll down the, the streets of, yeah, in the parade. The it's set. just amazing. It's yes. amazing. And you see all of the work that goes into each of these floats, either our float or other floats. Yeah. And it's the dedication. It's the same work that's going on throughout the yeah. entire place. Yeah. Wow. Millions and millions of roses, right? Millions, millions and of millions roses. of uh, what other products do you use? Oh, we use anything that's natural in its natural state. So this year we'll have a boat with redwood bark. We'll have paper bark on our float. We'll have status. We'll have straw flower. We'll have roses. We'll have iris ca um, cats. Um, just it's endless, the things wow. that we'll have on the float. Wow. Meeting some fantastic people on the West Coast this week, and so we'll be sharing quite a bit of the volunteer life. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Any last words that you would say to someone that's getting ready to um, set out on a journey of starting a new project with volunteers? What's the first thing that you would tell them? You know, make sure that the volunteers know that they're loved, that they're appreciated. Um, no matter what they do, it might end up being the most beautiful thing or they might have put 100% of their energy in. It's always important that you thank them for what they do, for who they are, and for giving their time because they could, they don't have to be there. They choose to be there. That's correct. Value, appreciation, and rewards. Yeah. Thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us. Thank Appreciate you for having me.